pulling up, I could almost see it from the outside. There was a lot in this store. So the first thing I saw when going in, I almost felt like I was home, right? I felt I felt that nostalgic feeling that I feel every time I walk into my own store. So there's walls of vintage equipment everywhere around the store. And it really got me hyped up and pumped to go through it all and see exactly what was on the shelves. Let's call these the butt cheek speakers. Well, all the versions of this tweeter. Right, yeah. But I don't think I've ever seen the 4435. Call them the butt cheeks and the Dolly Parton's. Look, oh, the, yeah, that's exactly right. I think the bottom of this would be the Dolly Parton's. Right. Uh, I've never actually used a full-size tube tester, self-service, so you can actually come in the store and test your tubes right on the tube tester. So I'm gonna try it because this is way before my time. So it's a 6BA11, so you would take this tube. Now, if most people that watch my channel have done this. Right. <laughs> but so the ones I have are a lot smaller. So you're going to go here on the tube tester and you're going to find 6BA11. Let's see, 6BA11 right down here. So D42 and 19. Selector is going to go to D. Set meter, is that this thing here? Oh, well, I could, <laughs> I could turn it on too. All right, so the selector's on D. So you're just gonna put your tube in here. Mm -hmm. So the tube will light up. We're gonna turn the meter up, meter setting, and then we're gonna hold this down because this is when it's actually testing it. And we're gonna let it go. And the meter will go up here if it's good. So the higher up, the better the tube is. Once you get down, probably even a 60, 70, it's probably time to replace. Right. So, and that's it. I need to get one of these. So there's like a whole wall of speakers and we got some Sansui's, which these, I'm gonna leave all these on because they're all screwed on. So we're just gonna skip the Sansui's and the Pioneers just in case they're screwed on too. Uh, of course, you can't remove the ARs, but we can remove the JBL 110s. So you can see a nice JBL speaker right there. Uh, that is a, a really nice vintage speaker. JBLs are very popular. Yeah. Uh, then if you go down here, the HPM 1100s, actually designed by the the JBL builder. It's just a bigger hoo hoo hoo. That 15 inch driver on the HPM 1100. So we came down to get those HPM 100s. This is the larger size uh, and that's the original driver. So in, in the other video or that we sent, put out a couple weeks ago where we went and got the HPM 900s, they re-coned it and put a new driver on uh, and I can tell this one's original because of the ridges where on the one I got that has to be redone, doesn't have the ridges. All right, so here we have a Pioneer SX 3600. I call these the beach receivers because of the way they glow, that blue, and they have the warm white lights in there. It's just a really nice receiver. Uh, early, I think early, I think it was 1980 this one came out, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Now this is kind of, you don't see these every day, like a Techniques, eight, is that? Is that really Techniques or would it have been Panasonic and it's just Panasonic. got a, it's got a badge? This yeah. is when Techniques took, uh, they changed the name to, to Techniques. Oh, so Panasonic. that's an original Techniques badge. Right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because yeah, most of these that you see will say or Panasonic. Panasonic. Yeah. Uh, so that's a cool feature that, that somebody who doesn't know would know. Uh, then you have a TX1500 MK2. Uh, you have a probably early 80s Sony, which these are actually really nice two channel amps. Uh, MCS, so you have the JC Pennies two piece. You have the tuner and the integrated amp. So coming over here, we have a Nakamichi SR3A. Is that a receiver? Mm -hmm. You don't see too many Nakamichi receivers. A real nice integrated Sansui uh, that isn't probably the most popular model, but it's pretty cool because you have the power meters and an EQ. A lot of people like those features on the integrated amp. To match this Nakamichi down here, you have a, a BX300 that is the direct drive version, which is great because there's no belts. So it's gonna last a long time. And that's a very, any of the Nakamichi cassette decks are very, very nice and very popular. So we're actually gonna power up this Marantz 1060, which will also light up this Nakamichi RX202 because I love this series here. So you can see that if you wanna reverse it, it's got the flip motor. So this one actually has two motors. There's a motor underneath uh, that actually flips the tape at the end, or you can manually flip it. So 
uh, very popular and I, I don't repair things, but I figured out how to adjust that mechanism with the pots inside the cassette deck. And I'm very proud of myself because I can't fix much else. So you got a BX100, another Nakamichi, that's a two head cassette deck. So there's a couple things to talk about here. So we will we'll start with some of the speakers. So I'm actually familiar, I'm not familiar with too many of these besides the Cornwalls and these Carver Amazings back here, which when we had the smaller store over on Harford Road, they took up pretty much most of our sales floor. So our sales floor was maybe 20 by 20, it was like this corner. And we had a pair of these in there, like on top of everything else. Yeah. So, uh, and it shut down almost every amp that I put on it. The phase linears, I have not seen these. Do the grills come off? Yeah. They snap, so just yeah, you have to pull a little hard. See, it's because I don't know what they look like behind. Ah, look at that. So, you have two eight inch maybe? Mm -hmm. Then you got the mid range, which kind of resemble a polk. And then you have a mid-range drive, or the, sorry, you have a tweeter down there that resembles Polk. And then you have four tweeters that upwards fire. And then you have a mid-range the fires rear. All right, so these are the Kef 105s. This was the first like Kef reference speaker, it's wasn't it? One. So 19, we'll see they're 61 years old now. So yeah, interesting. All right, going over here, we have a Sansui, a vintage clock. That's, what's it, probably early 70s, right? Maybe like 74. A dealer clock. Yeah, the dealer clock. And then coming down here, we have a Nakamichi stack. So you got the Nakamichi ST7 tuner, uh, the preamp, the CA5. We're going down the bottom to the PA7. Probably one of the only amps that can power the Carver Amazings, right? <laughs> a really nice 2325 right here. So I noticed you do a lot of your lamps original. Mm -hmm. So you're definitely, you're, in a, you're on the side right. of original. I'm on the other side. The other side. <laughs> oh, the, it's, it's always an ongoing debate. Like my guys put those in, they get yelled at. Right. <laughs> but it's, you know, unless somebody requests them. So let's see what we got here. We got a nice Scott set. Uh, we, right. have, we have a couple, this may even be like the one we have now with this. This is the one we have now. So these are mono tuners. Right. Magnavox tube amp. And you got a Bogan. We have some off-brand Bogan, like a Terrasonic or something, and right. it's like black and it it looks exactly like the Bogan, but nobody buys it because of the name. A nice citation set, so your Harman Kardon Citation 4 and 3X. So that's the tuner. tuner. And then that is the integrated amp, right? Preamp. Preamp. So that would go with the tube amplifier. Yeah. So you have the tuner. The Citation 3, 10, and then the preamp Citation 4. We have a couple of Parasounds, some PS Audio. We're gonna stick stick with the vintage. There's another four channel phase linear and a Sound Craftsman. That's a vintage Sound Craftsman. That one's pretty nice. SP4002. This is an interesting looking Dynaco. That's the one with the meters. Same, same. Okay. Below it. Oh, same below it. It's just like the, uh, oh, what's the one I have? It's like a 4,000 or something. There's one with like the, the handles. It's real big and they make one yeah. without and one with the meters. Right. Might be a 700. Interesting. I didn't know they made that one with and without too. That's mm -hmm. cool. Looks much better with the meters. They all look much yeah. better with me. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Macintosh MC2120. Amp, the same one here, so you could mono block them if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Marantz model 140, these are highly collectible. Really like those. Macintosh 2100, the 240, I love the 240. The 240 sounds so good. It's also like you can use it in place of a heater in your yes. house. <laughs> uh, so, yes. but it's just a beautiful, we actually, we recently did a video on those in general, I don't remember which one we did. It might've been the 240, 275, where they changed it over the years. And we said, you know, because the husbands didn't want their wives to know they were bringing home new amps. Uh, <laughs> so they tried to keep it the same. I just I just love weird stories like that, whether they're true or not. You have a Kenwood KT5300 tuner and then a KE3500 amp, integrated amp. Uh, the Marantz 3800, which has the EQ in the middle, and then the matching amp, the 250M, that's a really nice model. 
going down here, have another Kenwood set, and then you have one of those really nice Akai sets that I'm actually eyeing up <laughs> because I like that set. Uh, so the 2650 and the 2450. I think we've had one of these before on the show, and I just I love that set. Some custom tube amps and a Pioneer TX9502, which is one of the most famous tuners ever made. So it's supposed to be one of the strongest, act, most accurate tuners out there. Uh, and then the matching SA9502 uh, integrated. So they have the the other styles of these where they have the open sides. Um, this one doesn't have those. I prefer this one. The ones with the open sides are hard to keep the speaker wire in for me. Uh, so you have the phase linear model 400. Uh, that's just an amp, that's a two channel amp. And then over here you have another two channel amp, which is the 700B, which this is a really nice one too. All right, let's look at the roll to rolls real quick. Oh, an Atari. So an MX5050. So this is a, is this a half inch? Or is it still a quarter inch? Quarter inch. Quarter inch. I guess I can see that by looking at the pen controllers. The Atari MX5050, this was from a radio station. Y102. Y102. Mm -hmm. So this is the one on the stand. You could get these stands for them that you could roll them around. I guess most of the radio stations use them. Some people would have them in their house. I think I've had one or two come in with that and I never really use it. So just room wise, it doesn't doesn't work. A lot of nice rotor reels back here. So we got a lot of a lot of seven inch, couple ten inches, Sony, Pioneer, uh, 1020. And a big TX down there. Those TX can be super heavy. Now we got to get to, let's not get to the biggie wall yet. We'll, we'll go over here. So one thing I found really cool about this store was they had the poster display. And I just remember flipping through these when I was younger, a teenager, just looking at all the different music posters. I love the Max L poster up there. I'm going to leave with one and we're going to put one in the store. And the fun thing about the Max L poster is the actual chairs the same chairs that they used in the Maxell poster are right over here in the store. So you can sit, you can come in the store, you can listen to music on the really massive speakers and sit and just be blown away like in the poster. My beard would just be like this, just going all over the place. So there's your, there's your Maxell chair. You can come in and sit in one just like in the poster. So there's also a full size record store, which we dug through and Bryson dug through for like an hour or so and picked out some good albums right over here. But the other cool thing that I find about this store is they also have these awesome listening stations in the back. So if you buy vinyl or before you buy vinyl, you can listen to them back in the listening stations. So you can come back here, you can put a record on put your headphones on and listen to the vinyl. It's kind of like the listening stations in Peaches, but that was CDs. So this is how you would try out vinyl. And you got a little booth, which is super cool. This wasn't here when you got the building. You you made this. They were here. Oh, these were here? Yes. Oh, well that were changing rooms. That worked out really well. It did. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go through what I would say is the main wall here, the more monster receivers, the collectible stuff. And you can come by Classic Audio, all this stuff's for sale. So give them a call, stop by their shop if you're in Alabama. It's an awesome store, just like we do. We just, we were coming up from New Orleans and I saw it on Google and was like, I have to go here. So we did, and now we're here and you're seeing it. So on this wall, you have a nice Marantz model 170. DC power amp, uh, carry CD player. Is that, that's not a CD player, it's an integrated amp. I have a couple of their, their CD players. They're new to me. I'm not too familiar with them. Super Scope. We've done a lot with Sc Super Scope as of recently. Found out they're actually the ones that did the Sony reel to reels. And I didn't know any of that. So it, it was really fun doing that video. I love, I have the Super Scope with the pink. And I love the pink. I don't know why that receiver just. Something about the pink LEDs, I don't know. So you have a Pioneer TX6800 and an SA5800. Over here you have a TX9502 and the matching tuner and the SA9502 integrated amp. Down here, we got a SA8800. That's an integrated amp from Pioneer. Some Champagne Kenwoods. 
a KA9800 and the matching tuner. And way down below, gosh, I can't even, way down below, look, I'm Mikey. I can do push-ups. <laughs> so we have a Kenwood KA7500 and, is that, no, 7300 and the KT7500. So that's a matching set. Then you have another, you got a lot of these nice Pioneer two-piece sets here. That's really cool. While we're down here on the floor, we might as well just come right over to this side. A lot of you guys out there love the Realistic and the Radio Shack stuff. So this SA2000, is that a 2000? SCA2000. Uh, that's a really cool model. Sansui Quad, the QRX 5500. Uh, we have a SX838. So that's a 70, 74 CR620. So we have a Sansui QRX7001 quad receiver there. That's the one with the little four that lights up in the dial. A Harman Kardon 150. We love the green Harman Kardons. Uh, that one has the the sound field balance control, which is really cool little joystick. Uh, so that's a that's a neat model. Sansui 2000X. Uh, you get a Mac 1900. So this is Macintosh's receivers that they ended up putting another name on, so they wanted to call them Max uh, when they came out because they didn't want people to look at them as the Macintosh name. So uh, these are always just beautiful looking receivers. This is what John has in his office. Uh, I don't think he's got a 1900, but he's got a Mac. A couple Sansui 2000s, Fisher 1000, a real big Anki, that's a 4500. Got a 5000X, got a Carver, Sonic Holography, I always pronounce that wrong. Another 2000X, got a nice Marantz stack right here, tuner, that's the 104, the 3200 preamp and the 140 amplifier. A beautiful looking 2275 up here. Now this actually has a custom case. Uh, they actually sell these custom built cases, the WC22s right here so they actually even have finished inside edges which the original ones do not have so it's a really nice cabinet if you're in need of them which everybody always is uh, they have those here too besides the custom case this is an original case it's just been refinished uh, it's just so beautiful in this Marantz 2250 you have a 2215 B coming down here we get to the pioneers that are so popular right now uh, you have an SX 980 from 78, you have a 1976 SX 1250. Coming down here, we have an 850. And as you see, you can tell the difference right away because the meters, they actually don't have power meters and the, the meters on it are the white color where on the 80 series they're black and there's two sets. There's the power and the signal. Plus there's some other features when they're lit up, they look a little bit different uh, as far as the input selectors. Uh, and then you have a SX626, that is a 72. You have a 950 down here, and an SX737, which is a 74. So you have a little bit of all the Pioneers, you have a little bit of all the Marat, Macintosh, Sansui, and just all kind of brands. There's just a little bit of everything here. So it's really cool if you're in Alabama, stop by and see it. So I had a ton of fun touring classic audio in the middle of Alabama. I don't even know where we were. It was just like a gem in the middle of nowhere. So cool just driving around like the country and finding this kind of stuff. So thank you, Steve, for giving us a tour of your classic audio store. So after leaving classic audio, we decided to meet up in Atlanta with Cole, and that's how we're gonna end the second night of our trip. Now, the third day, we're actually gonna go to some vintage car shows, check out some vintage radios, and we're gonna go through the mountains on our way back to the store.